you all have been using compressor in the wrong way hold on a minute don't get angry listen to me why do you use a compressor it is to dynamically level out everything in your audio right but if there is too much of dynamic difference between your louder sections and your softer sections and then you add a compressor won't it affect your tracks because you're doing a lot of processing if it's too soft and if it's really loud and the difference is a lot your compressor is doing a lot of work and it might sound very bad so if you're struggling with stuff like that and you want to fix that issue then you click the right video so today we're going to learn how to automate certain things using a particular plugin so that this dynamic level will sort of be balanced a bit so that when you add a compressor it might sound better i'm florina jane otherwise known as flow of music and if you are somebody who wants tutorials on music production then you need to subscribe to my channel so without any delay let's get started let's imagine we have a track that has such a loud section and then it has such a soft section then again it has such a loud section you get the point right now your compressor is going to see the length of this see the length of this smaller section and when you keep a threshold like that all these extra stuff will come down and all these softer sections go up that is the job of a compressor. So now that we know what a compressor is in a very brief manner, imagine you have a track like that and then you have a track like this. Can you see this difference? Difference between the loudest section and the softest section. The difference is too big. You can still add a compressor, put a threshold and make it perfect. But what happens is the compressor has a lot of work in its hand and it has to compress and work harder in order to make these softer sections louder and these louder sections softer. Instead of directly putting a compressor on a track like this with so much of inconsistency, what you can do is automate your volume level. What I can do is have an automation in such a way that when the section comes, I can make the gain lesser. And when the softer sections come, I can increase the gain a bit. Decrease it here, increase it there, decrease it, increase it, decrease it. As a result of what just happened, you will get a waveform that's, you know, dynamically better. So I might have a waveform like that with the louder sections and the softer sections might be like this. Again, the louder sections and then the softer section. This time, look at the dynamic difference. It's not a lot, right? And that is good for your track. I mean, when you put a compressor on it right now, it lacked in an even more smoother manner and it won't sound a lot more processed. So that is what we're going to learn today. There are so many ways by which you can do this automation. So this is the track that we are going to look into. Let's take just one track. Now, visibly, when you look at it, you can see that these waveforms have a certain height and they are smaller in comparison to tracks like these. And these are again smaller. These are again a bit bigger. These are again really small. If you take this track, you can see that here it's pretty high. Let me zoom it a bit. So it's pretty high in comparison to all these stuff. So there is a dynamic difference. See, these tracks are slightly smaller in amplitude in comparison to these tracks. So what I can do right now is click one of the tracks that are soft according to what you visualize. I can go to inspector, open this region and there's a gain knob over here. So I can technically increase it. So look at the region when I'm increasing it. You see, it's getting bigger. If I reduce it, it becomes smaller. So I can technically go ahead and arrange each and every track by increasing or decreasing the gain so that everything is almost equal to each other. This is a good process. It's not a bad one. But imagine like I have all these small, small changes like for example, this section and I want it to be louder over here. I can just press the marquee tool by pressing command highlight this section, click it so that it becomes a section. Now decrease it or increase it. Okay, all those things can be done. But how many times are you going to do it? How many sections are you going to do it? Within this track itself, I have so many vocal tracks going on. So how many times am I going to section it and how many times am I going to increase this gain? So this might become a tedious process. We look at another method. Another method would be volume automation. So I'm going to take an example of this track. These sections are a bit louder than these sections. And then when I scroll over, look at this particular section. It's really louder in volume in comparison to all that. So I can probably automate the volume. And by volume, I mean this volume fader. Press the letter A to open automation. And it shows you exactly in what level the volume is at right now. So I can press over here so that it creates a point. Now, if I need these sections louder, I can add points. So I can just click 
two points over here. I can click two points over here because I don't want to affect this right now. I'm going to click this and this point by pressing shift and I'm going to increase it. So I'm automating the volume. So what happens is when I play, these sections will have an increase in volume. Then again, when it comes here, it decreases. I'll close the automation right now. Look at this knob. So when I'm playing, as it goes that way, you see it automatically decreases. So that's the purpose of automation. So I can go on, probably increase this area and yeah, that's how I do it. Or if you want to do automations pretty quickly, you can press command, highlight this region and press it. So you get two points automatically. Now I can increase it or decrease it like that instead of creating two points and all those fuss, okay? But let me tell you about the disadvantage of this method. When this track is played, right? I feel like it's good, it's sounding good and all that. Now I close automation. Now, when the entire project is being played, I feel like this low harmony, it could be made better when it's increased in volume. So I can, yeah, try and increase it. It's in minus seven. I want to increase it a bit. So I'm going to increase it by minus three. Let's see if it's staying in minus three. So when I play, did you see the jump? So again, I'll show it to you. I've kept it in minus one, but when I play, See, it went back a bit lower. The reason is you've done automation to this volume track. And because of that, it won't stay in that place even though you push it up higher or lower. It comes back to the automation values that you have set. You need to go again to the automation, select everything like that, and then lower it. So if I have automation on a lot of tracks, and if I want to adjust the volume with respect to other tracks, the only way that I could do it is opening the automation, selecting all the tracks, and then lowering or increasing it. Instead of, you know, directly going to the mixer window and moving the faders, that won't work in this case. This is giving you extra workload, right? And it's better you always have a very easy and very less workload so that you can work on your projects faster. This doesn't seem as feasible of a method, right? So let me just delete it quickly. That's how you delete it. You just select everything and click delete. There's another method also. You can try and use flex. Okay, so I can just press flex like that. Open the editor. Click one of the tracks. Again, press flex. Turn on flex. And I can select pitch. When you have pitch, by the way, if you don't know how to use flex pitch, I'll link a video over here so that you can learn more about flex pitch and how to auto-tune your tracks. This is flex, right? And if you want to increase the volume of a particular track, I can just come over here to gain and lower it. You can see that the waveform gets smaller. Increase it if you want it louder. So technically, I can do that for almost all the places where I want any change in the volume. But do you think this is a feasible idea and you have a lot of tracks going on? I don't think so, right? So we need to figure out a method that does not affect the volume faders here because it needs to be independent from the automation that is happening so that I can do any changes quickly and doesn't involve too much of workload to me. So what I do is I go to the inspector window and add a gain plugin. So I can come to audio effects, come down to utility, add a gain. You can add mono itself with some mono track. Now we're gonna automate the gain in this plugin, okay? Not the volume fader. Close it, close the inspector. Now click A. So now it's in volume. We need to choose the gain in the gain plugin. So click this, come down to the gain plugin that you added. So this is the first plugin that you added. That's why it's given you a number one. So go to this, go to gain, create automation points. So let's see if there's any change happening. But on the other hand, what change is happening is when I open the inspector, open the gain, this time you'll see all these changes happening over here. See? Now after that, see? So now you have a flexibility to operate this volume fader without it affecting the automation that you applied. All those automations are happening to this gain. And since automating stuff, it's easier, right? Because last time also when we did volume automation, automating stuff, it's easy. You just need to add points, lower it or increase it. But the disadvantage was that you couldn't control the fader outside in the mixer window as well. So to give that flexibility is the reason why 
we add a gain plugin over here and automate the gain plugin and doing that really helps your tracks to dynamically get a bit better you don't want to make it really equal all the loud and the soft parts because then there won't be any dynamics at all in your track so almost right you know balance it out correctly when you add a compressor after that your compressor won't work a lot okay it won't process a lot it will just smooth out your tracks and your tracks will sound even better otherwise it will sound too processed try automating all your tracks before you add a compressor and you will notice a difference and if you want me to do any more videos on music production just put the topic below and i'll definitely do a video on that so i hope this video was useful thank you so much for watching keep making music and i'll see you guys in another video